Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the new Sky for Sim EFB coming up on this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back. I've done a comparison video between the Sky for Sim EFB tablet as well as the Sim EFB tablet in the past. If you haven't seen that video, I'll post links down below in the description or you can click up here. Now there's been some major, major updates to the Sky for Sim tablet, and I think it's now becoming my favorite EFB to use. In today's video, we're not gonna be going over any download or installation of the application, Dang it. as I think this is pretty much the easiest thing to download and install for Microsoft Flight Sim. We will be going over the desktop server application, as well as the most important, how to upload documents to the EFB tablet. And once we're finished with that, we'll fire up the sim and take a look at the new EFB tablet and all the different menus that are available. Lastly, we'll touch on the pilot to ATC integration. If you have any questions or comments along the way, post them down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. If the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick on that little bell and smash that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. Now before we hop right into the video, I just want to let you know that they have two different versions of the Sky for Sim EFB, either the free version or the premium upgrade. We're going to be going over the premium upgrade version today, as this is the most feature packed version. And for the price, I don't think you can beat it. Before we get into the server application, I do recommend that you create two new folders on your desktop one for your flight plans, and one for Pilot to ATC if you're using that application. Now once you have that finished, we can open the server application on your desktop. So let's go over each of these starting with the General tab. The General tab is where we can start and stop the server application for the Sky for Sim EFB tablet. Note that if you do want to start and stop the server application, you do not have to exit Microsoft Flight Simulator to do so. The other thing that this page offers is we can open up the Sky for Sim pad in a web browser form. The next tab over is the Documents tab, and here's where we can organize all of our flight plans, maps, charts, anything that you want to display on your EFB tablet, you can organize right here. At the very bottom, we have the PDF conversion quality. To add any documents to the EFB tablet, you'll be clicking on this blue bar here to access the Document Manager. And here's where we can enter all of our documents to the EFB tablet. Now, one thing that this offers now that it did not offer before is that we can actually paste an image right from our clipboard into the Sky for Sim EFB tablet. And I think that is the biggest improvement here. And the reason for that is a lot of things that you may want to upload on the tablet may be just images that you find on Google or on the web. So let me show you how this is going to work real quick. You'll notice at the bottom here that it says paste an image from clipboard. It is not emboldened, so we can't actually click on that. We can upload PDFs, but we can't paste an image from the clipboard. So to do that, we just need to click on the folder plus icon over here, and then we can name this folder whatever you want. So if you want this folder to be all of your charts, name it charts. If you would like to name each folder for individual ICAOs, you can do that as well. So for today, we're just going to call this a test. Click OK. So now what you want to do is to double click on the new folder. And at the bottom, you can now see that paste an image from clipboard is emboldened. Let me show you how easy it is now to add anything that you want. Anything. Let's show you. OK, so we've got Sky Vector open here. And let's say we want to take a picture of this map and place it inside of our EFB tablet. Well, before this would have been a little bit difficult because we don't have a PDF form of this map. It's on our web page. So what I recommend to do is to go down to search, type in snip. That will open up the snipping tool application. You can then take this application, right click, and you can pin it to your taskbar. It will then appear at the bottom. So all you need to do now is to do a one click and it opens up the snipping tool. Now, if you click new, we can highlight the part of the map that we would like to put into our EFB tablet. Now all we need to do is to go up to edit, 
you can either hit copy or the control C on your keyboard to copy it directly to your clipboard. So we'll do that real quick. And now if we go back to the sky for sim server application on our PC, at the bottom, we hit paste image from clipboard. And now we can name that specific image. So we're just going to call this map one. Hit OK. And there we go. There's the map inside of our documents now. So let's do one more. I have an approach chart here and I want to add that into the EFB tablet. Open the snipping tool, click new. Highlight what I want to snip. I'm going to go up to edit or hit control C on your keyboard. Go back to the sky for sim server application. It pays from clipboard and we're just going to call this ILS. Hit OK. And there you go. There's our new chart just entered. All right. So the next tab over is the settings tab. And this is where we're going to be able to link that flight plan folder that we created on our desktop to the sky for sim server application. To do so, we can just hit the browse button, find the folder that you created on your desktop, hit OK. And that is it. Below that, we have the Microsoft Flight Sim community folder. And you want to make sure that you have the correct address in here for your community folder. I believe this is going to auto populate for you, so you really shouldn't have to worry about it. But if you do, you'll go through the same process by hitting the browse, finding your community folder, and you're all set. At the bottom here, we have a couple different options for the startup. We can auto start the Sky for Sim server on application startup, and we can also start minimized in the system tray. Okay, so the next tab over is the integration tab, and here's where we can set up the Sky for Sim tablet for use with Pilot to ATC. Here's where it can become a little bit confusing, so just follow along. Remember we placed a folder on our desktop when we first started the video for the Pilot to ATC and you named it whatever you wanted to name it. Now what we need to do before you actually set anything in here is we need to get a conversation text path to populate. Now you can't just add a text file yourself it has to come from pilot to ATC. So before we can enter anything here, we need to open up our pilot to ATC application and go down to the configuration. Once the configuration is open, you're going to head over to the speech tab at the very top and go all the way down to where it says conversation text file path. You will then click the enable and then you will click on the browser box over here to the right. Once you do that, you're going to locate your pilot to ATC file folder that you created on your desktop, and it's going to be named whatever you named it. At the bottom here, you're going to see that it's going to automatically put a file name here that says conversation text. We're going to hit save, and now that will create a conversation text file path. For us to use in the sky for sim server application. One thing to note on the pilot to ATC folder I placed on my desktop, you'll see I do not have the conversation text file path in here yet. So to get it to populate inside of the folder, all you need to do is to click the connect button on the pilot to ATC application. Once you do that, it's not going to connect to the sim or anything because I don't have the sim running. But well, you'll notice that the file folder has just populated a file inside. So we can open that again and you will now see the conversation text file path in the pilot ATC text folder. Perfect. Now we no longer need the pilot ATC application. So I'm going to get rid of that. Now we can come back to the sky for sim integration tab and select our correct conversation text file path. We're going to click on the enable pilot ATC integration. We're then going to go to our desktop, locate that pilot to ATC text file, double click, find the conversation text file, and then click open. Now you've got it properly set up so that the pilot to ATC application can communicate with the sky for sim server application. Below that, we have a couple other checkboxes, so we can either show ATC messages, show pilot messages, or also show suggested messages. This is just going to give you one response to respond back. If you want to start a conversation, you already have to know how to start that conversation by voice, or you'll have to open the pilot to ATC application 
and hit this little plus at the bottom and that'll bring up all your available requests or responses to ATC. But this helps out tremendously, especially when we're in VR. We don't have to write down all of the information that ATC is going to give us for an IFR flight. We will see all of that populate on the EFB tablet itself. Next over is the license tab. And here's where you're going to enter your license information that you received from sky for sim Lastly, we have the help tab. And this is just basically going to take us to the sky for sim website and enable us to access some online documentation. Before we fire up the sim and open up the EFB tablet there, let's show you how to upload a flight plan. So now we no longer need this, we can click on the X, minimize, you never want to quit out of the server. If you do, you will not be able to use the tablet on your simulator. Now we're going to be utilizing that flight plan file folder that we had placed on our desktop. All you need to do is to open up the flight planner of your choice. We're using little nav map here. I've done a complete tutorial of little nav map. I'll post links down below in the description or you can click up here. We're going to put together a rudimentary flight plan here real quick so we can just show you how this is going to integrate into sky for sim. All right, so that's it. I'm just going to go up to file down to export flight plan as a PLN. Uh, we're not going to select the start position, hit save, and you're going to select that flight plan file folder that we had placed on our desktop. So I've already got that up in the address bar. Name your flight plan, whatever you want. We're going to call it test one and then hit the save button. And that's all there is to it to upload a flight plan into the EFB tablet. All right, so let's fire up the sim and show you what it's like inside of Microsoft Flight Sim. We'll see you right back here in a minute. Welcome back everyone. We have now spawned into the sim. So let's go ahead and hop into the cockpit so we can take a look at that new EFB tablet. We're gonna head right up to the toolbar and you'll see the icon for the Sky for Sim NG tablet. Click on to open. Once opened, I do wanna go over a really neat feature of the Sky for Sim NG tablet. Down here in the lower right hand corner, we can click on this button here and it will remove the bezel around. So it will be even more realistic when you're in VR in the cockpit. It's really amazing. To get it back, we can click on that and that will allow us to move it around. If you remove the bezel, you cannot move it around your cockpit, but you can make it bigger. One initial startup for the Sky for Sim tablet, you'll be left with the map mode. In map mode, we have all the different icons over here in which we can zoom in, zoom out. We can also change the different maps that we have available for us. If you have not installed a Bing API key, you are gonna need to do that so that you can visually see all the different maps for your background. Below that, we can show flight plan on our EFB tablet. We have not uploaded it yet, so it's not gonna show there. Down below that, we also have a weather icon to give us our current weather in our location. We are using custom weather today. That's why our altimeter is 29 or 9 or 2. Below that is all the filters that we can apply to the map. The other thing I really like about this map is if you hover over any of the airports, it'll give us all the frequencies for that airport as well as the various runways. And if you click over the airport, it will open up the airport menu in the EFB tablet to show us all the different information about that airport. So on the general page, this will give us some of the weather the runways, and some frequencies at the bottom. Next over, we have the general tab. This will give us some more general information about the airport. We have the runway tab. This will give us any information you need to know about each individual runway at that particular airport. So this can be very helpful as well. Next over, we have the frequencies tab, and this will give us all of the frequencies for your airport. And one thing to note on the frequencies chart, down at tower, you can see that we have several different frequencies for this airport, as well as ground. If you open up the airport chart using Sky Vector or any other means, it should tell you, depending on where you're located on that airport, of which frequency to use. But if you're using Pilot to ATC, I don't think it really matters which frequency you're using, just as long as you're using one of them. The next menu over is the ILS menu, and this will give us all the ILS information or the different runways on this airport. 
Next over is the weather menu. And again, this will give us the current ATIS and the weather for this particular airport. If you would like to change the airport that is listed here, all you need to do is go to the ICAO and it will open up this awesome keyboard and very useful in VR. All you need to do is type in the ICAO of the airport that you would like to enter. Hit enter and that will give us all the current information there. At the bottom, we have a couple different icons here. The first one is our map. So this is going to take us back to our main global map. And to the right of that, this will take us to all of the different various menus that we can choose. Also at the bottom, we have a back button here. And to each side of the tablet, we have an arrow to the left and an arrow to the right. And what these are for is this allows us to flip through custom menus that we set up in the Sky for Sim application here. So we don't have to always go back to our main menu screen. From here, we can have our preset menus in and just hit the left and right and it'll scroll through those menus. The next one over we have is the flight plan. Here's where we can upload our flight plan into the Sky for Sim application. To upload your flight plan, click on this little disk icon and it will open up the flight plan menu for us. We can then select the flight plan that we would like to use and you need to double click on that here. That will open up our flight plan for us. And over here on the right, this is where we can either share our flight plan. Notice below, because we do not have the Bing API key in, it is not gonna give us any display elevation charts. No, so for you. The next tab over is the weather tab. And this is pretty self-explanatory. This will give you the weather for where you are at the particular moment. The next tab over is the documents tab. And here's where we're able to access any of the documents from the folders we place on the desktop as well as adding any links or files to them. So at the bottom, we can add a PDF file link that you may get from the web. Let's take a look at the ILS chart we went over earlier in the video. If we zoom in on the address bar, you can see that this web page is depicted in a PDF format. So all you need to do is to copy the link and paste inside the EFB tablet, and then you can create a file name for it and download it directly from the web into your sky for sim ng tablet. That's a pretty neat feature here. So there's two ways in which we can access our file folders. We can do that through the documents tab and click on the folder and it will open up the different files we had placed in that folder. And it will also show us the name of the folder at the very top. So if we have multiple folders, we can scroll through them. The other thing that we can do is if we go back to the main menu here, we go over to the PDF reader, we can use this as well and eliminate a couple keystrokes because it will just take us right to our PDFs. And as you can see, the clarity on this chart is very good. If we take a look at the map we had uploaded into the Sky for Sim tablet, and let's take a little zoom in here, we can see the clarity is very good on this as well. I can read everything that's on here. And let's zoom in a little bit further just to see how it looks. Yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section here. All right, next up we have is the pilot book, and this will log all of our different flights that we're using the Sky for Sim EFB tablet. Next to each of these flights, we'll have a little information icon. This is really cool. If you click on this icon, it will give us all the information about this flight. So our altitude, distance, duration, and how the landing was. That's pretty cool. Also, if you click on each of these, you will see down below in the mapping section, a map of the actual flight that you performed. Next to the pilot book we have is the whiteboard, and this is gonna give us a scratch pad, and this is very, very useful if we're in VR, because we can just use our VR controller to pretty much write down anything that we want. I'm using my mouse right here, so it's kind of difficult. To erase any of it, all we need to do is to hit the trash can at the top and it will remove anything that we have there. Back to the main menu again. Next to that is the notepad. And the notepad is going to enable us to type in anything that we would like here. So I believe you can use your keyboard, your physical keyboard, as well as we have the keyboard on the screen. To the right of that, this is the notifications tab. And this is where we're going to see 
all of our transcription between us and ATC using Pilot to ATC. I'll show you how to use that in just a moment. Next to the notifications icon is the FS Bush Trips. This is where we can select any of the pre-selected or pre-configured flight plans for us to explore the world. To use this, all we need to do is to click on any of those and then we can pick which one we would like to use. If you double click on it and it will open up that in your flight plan menu so you can then follow that on your map. Next to our bush trips, we have full integration with NeoFly. You click on this, once you have NeoFly loaded and running, I believe all you need to do is click the connect and it will just sync right up with NeoFly. I have not gotten to check that out yet, but it looks pretty user friendly. At the top, you also have a couple other icons that you can use inside of NeoFly. And because I haven't experimented with that yet, I really can't go over what they do. Back to the main menu again, we have the news icon. This will give us any news or updates for the sky for sim EFB tablet. Last on the list here is the settings tab, and this is going to be the most important so that we get the best experience out of sky for sim EFB. So you want to go through each of these icons at the top and make sure that we have everything set up correctly. The first menu that we have over on the left is graphics. We have different map styles, different aircraft icons, map icons. Down at the bottom here, this is going to be your notification pop-ups. So if you're not in the notification menu, there will be a pop-up that will show up on the current menu which you are on. But here's where you can actually set it so that it's only on for a certain amount of time. And again, the notifications are going to be any type of notifications, but more importantly, the use of Pilot to ATC. At the bottom, you have your different text sizes. The next menu at the top is the map backgrounds, and these are all the map backgrounds that you can choose for your main map. Again, if you do not have the Bing API loaded, you won't be able to see all of the various maps. Next to that is our fast swap. This is where I was talking about in the beginning of the video where we had those little arrows down here on each side so that we can switch through very quickly preset icon list that we choose. Here's where we would be doing that. All you need to do is to drag whatever you do not want from the top here and bring it down. And anything that you do want at the top, all you need to do is to drag it up to the top. Next to that, we have the shortcut menu, and here's where we can set up just a couple shortcuts to activate or deactivate the Sky for Sim pad, as well as the stopwatch. Next is our nav data update. You want to make sure, especially if it's your first time installing this into your PC, that you click the update button here at the bottom so that it can scavenge all that information from Microsoft Flight Simulator to install into your EFB tablet. Next over is the PDF reader. And here's where we can choose the different quality levels of our PDF reader. Anytime you make any changes here, make sure you hit the apply button at the very bottom. To the right of that is where we would want to enter our Bing API key. I'm not going to go over how to get a Bing API key, but if you just go over to Google and type in Bing API key, once you get that key, you can enter it here, click save, and now you will have full access and functionality of all of the different map backgrounds that you can display on the EFB tablet. So now that we have gone over all the different menus on the EFB tablet, I would like to go over how to use the Pilot to ATC and show you how it integrates into the Sky for Sim NG tablet. So I'm just going to bring up the Pilot to ATC menu here, click Connect. So now as you can hear the ATIS information, the ATIS information will not populate on the Sky for Sim tablet as a notification. The only thing that will populate there is any transcription between you and ATC. So now let's show you how that's going to work. We're just going to transfer to ground frequency. And again, if you're unsure of any of the verbiage, you can just click down here on this plus icon. And that'll open up a box here so that you can see all the different phrases that you can say to ATC. So I'm just going to go down to taxi, request taxi to the active, and now I'm just going to come down here and hit the say it button. Beach 020 request taxi to runway 16 left. 
Beach 020 taxi to runway 16 left via taxiways Alpha 4, Foxtrot 4, Echo, Foxtrot 1, Foxtrot, Golf. Now because we're not in the notification menu, the pop-up is only going to be displayed for what we chose in the settings menu. So that's why I said make sure you set it up accordingly so you get enough time to see it. If you need to go back to the notifications tab, all we need to do is to click the notifications and you will see all the transcription between us and ATC. The latest or the newest transcription will always be at the top. So you'll always be reading from top down. Now, how we're gonna see this is the aircraft icon. This is gonna be coming from us. So this is gonna let us know that we said this to ATC. ATC is gonna be depicted in a little tower icon here. And this is what ATC had just said to us. Above that, with the little microphone icon, this is a suggested text that you could say back to ATC. So I could say, taxi to runway 16 left. Via taxiways Alpha 4, Foxtrot 4, Echo, Foxtrot 1, Foxtrot Golf, Whiskey, Hotel, Hotel 13, Old Short Runway 16 left, Beach 020. Now you will see at the very top, my transcription back to ATC. And again, you'll know that because it's depicted with a little aircraft symbol. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of the video. If you have any comments or questions, post them down below in the comments section, and I will get right back to you. If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, hit on that little bell, and smash that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, keep the blue side up, and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.